All right, today I'm going to share with you the secret to being successful in geometry. Okay. Now, don't tell anybody, it is a secret. And the key to being successful in geometry is memory, repetition, and focus. And I take time to do this because, unfortunately, a lot of cases, uh, people come to geometry, uh, being their first high school math class, uh, have a little bit of difficulty figuring out exactly how to be successful. Don't really know uh, what to do or how to do it or when to do it, uh, unfortunately. Some of us, all we kind of do is just show up to class, and then when things don't go correctly, uh, we seem to be a little bit confused about what to do about it. So let me see if I can't help you out here. The question becomes, how do I memorize so many facts, rules, theorems, postulates, and definitions? As I already told you, geometry is a little bit of a unique class. A lot of people think, I, I'm not good at math, I don't like math, and we'll get to all that here in just a second, but geometry is really not much of a math class as you have come to think about it. Uh, we learn very little new mathematics in geometry. We spend a lot of our time applying old algebra skills to geometric shapes and patterns and real world applications and things like that. So in a lot of ways geometry is more of an English class than it is a math class or more of a foreign language than it is a math class because it kind of has its own vocabulary. Now, different people learn in different ways, okay, but many people are already thinking of all of the excuses that I've already mentioned, a couple of them, uh, all the reasons why we think we are not going to be successful. It's only the second day of school, but already some people have already kind of convinced themselves that they're not going to be successful. So let's look at a few of the more common ones. Of course, there's the, the most popular one. I don't like to study. Okay, well, I'm sorry. You know, not everything that we do in life is attached to what we would like to be doing. Uh, there's obviously plenty of things everybody would like to be doing rather than going to school, rather than going to work, rather than going to court and taking care of necessary chores and things like that. Uh, the point is, is you don't have to like something in order to be good at it. You simply have to accept the fact that that is what is needed and you're going to have to take care of business. Okay, so let's set personal feelings and things like that aside and take care of what must be taken care of. I'm not good at memorizing things. A lot of people tell this one as well. Uh, and that can have a lot to do with how you're going about trying to memorize stuff. Are you actually putting in the amount of time that would be necessary to memorize it? Is your time uninterrupted? Do you have the TV off, the cell phone put away, uh, things like that, or is something capturing your attention every 20 seconds and that is keeping you from focusing on the things that you're actually trying to memorize? Your mind may not be getting a very good uh, exposure to the material and that may be why you're not memorizing things correctly. I've never needed to study before, so why should I start now? Well, welcome to high school, guys. It's not all as simple as kindergarten finger painting once was. Okay. As the material gets harder, your brain gets more evolved, more synaptic pathways, things like that. And uh, this stuff, we are not just born knowing these things. It's going to have to be programmed in our brain. So if you have survived all these years just simply showing up to class, uh, it may be time to rethink your strategy. If I just keep showing up, I will get it eventually. A lot of people think this way about math. They go, wow, I didn't understand what we did in class yesterday, so I'll just tell the teacher that I didn't get it, and then the teacher will go back over it again. Uh, that may have been how it was in elementary school and junior high and things like that, but in high school, that is simply not the case. We have an enormous amount of material that needs to be covered. It will be covered in class. Getting that material learned and memorized and figured out that responsibility lies on the student. So if you do not understand what went on in class yesterday, do not just show up to class again today with your fingers crossed hoping it will make more sense. You need to find time. Come in for tutorials. Get the help that you obviously need. When am I ever going to have to use this? Well, you got, no, guys, you may not ever actually know this, but that uh, or need to know this. But that is kind of the truth of just about anything that you you take in in high school. I actually find this to be one of the sillier arguments in all of education. Uh, you know what? You may never need to know the periodic table. You may never need to know how to diagram a sentence or to write a concluding paragraph. You may never need to know how to find the area of a parallelogram. But you know what? If we we 
are doing the best that we can to prepare you for life beyond high school, it is important that you at least have some basics. Imagine how difficult it would be if you decided that you wanted to be uh, you know, a mathematics teacher or an engineer of some kind or even a doctor, and only after you decided that at the college level did we then begin to start teaching you any mathematics. You would be in college for 20 years trying to get all of everything taken care of. Okay, we have to start somewhere. This is the somewhere that we have to start in mathematics. We got to get you some basics so that you can take the next steps later on. So even though you may not know why you're doing it, rest assured there are reasons and good philosophies behind why we're doing it. Okay, so let's just suck it up and get it done. It's so stupid that they make us learn this. Well, maybe it is, you know, but there's plenty of things that we have to do in life that are just plain stupid. It doesn't change uh, whether we are required to do those things or not. So our personal opinions of those things or whether we think there's value in these things that we're doing really doesn't hold any relevance at all. It's the requirement. Let's get it done. I don't have time to do this. Uh, I will be perfectly honest. Most people think they do not have time to do these things. And the, unfortunately, what they are thinking is it doesn't fit into my current schedule and my current personal life the way that my current personal life is set up. So I'm just going to say I don't have time. What we're not doing is we're not saying, hey, conditions and circumstances have changed. I need to adjust what I'm currently doing so that things can fit in because that's the necessity, the requirement is that we be successful in this course. So adjust your schedule, adjust your life, even if it's inconvenient for you, force things to fit into your schedule so that you can take care of what needs to be taken care of. Fact is, our minds are more powerful than we give them credit for. A lot of times we shortchange ourselves and we don't give us the credit that we deserve on our mental abilities. Okay, If you will expose yourself to information in a focused, uninterrupted manner, your mind will respond and remember. In fact, I'm going to give you one of the critical things uh, to being successful in a high school mathematics course right now. You need to find 20 to 30 minutes every day on the average uh, to dedicate uninterrupted uh, time towards your mathematics studies. People get themselves in trouble when they only sit down for 10 minutes once a week and try to get all caught up or try to study for a test. That is not how you uh, make yourself successful in a high school math class. You need to be exposed repeatedly and frequently uh, to the material that's going on so that you can get it from your short-term memory into your long-term memory. Okay, And that means TV off. That means if you're watching an instructional video, you're actually listening to the audio rather than listening to music. That means that your phone is not in your reach. You're not dropping everything that you're doing, breaking your concentration every seven seconds because you're carrying on four different text conversations or you got to see who hit the like button on your, on your picture on Facebook. Stupid stuff like that is what prevents us from taking care of important stuff like this. Here in a moment, we're going to look at a collage of items. I'm going to give you a whole minute in order to study as much as you can about the pictures uh, that are in this collage, and then we're going to answer several questions about that. Okay. Afterwards, we're going to see how well our minds did. We're going to see when we tell ourselves, uh, I'm not good at memorizing things, I can't remember this. Well, we'll see exactly how good or bad we might be. Okay. So here we go. We're going to take 60 seconds, and we're beginning now. Okay, I'm skipping over it uh, in the video. Uh, you don't need to be sitting there at home wasting time on this. Okay, but now what we're going to do in the classroom is we're going to play a little uh, question and answer and see how many we can get. Okay, and at the end of this activity, what we've uh, most likely found in the classroom is that we were able to come up with 50 critical pieces of information about that collage after only looking at it for 60 seconds. And the key is we were focused on what we were doing. It was the only thing that had our attention. We were intent. We were quiet. We studied. And in the end, we proved that we could actually get stuff memorized if we would dedicate ourselves to doing it. But one of the 
critical things is you got to believe that you can do it. If you walk into any situation in life convinced that you're no good, convinced that you can't do it, already telling yourself that you hate it and it's pointless and all that kind of stuff, then you have already given yourself every reason that you will not be successful at it and you will live up to your own expectations. You told yourself you wouldn't be able to do it, and in the end, you probably weren't able to do it. You need to flip your thinking, just like we're flipping this classroom. Open your mind, and let's see what's possible.